everybody welcome to this playthrough for the common trials a tournament pro and expert division this playthrough is a little bit special as i'm using videos for the sunshine glaze not the cursed swamp why am i doing that and still post a playthrough it's because the cursed swamp is the same as sunshine glaze the only thing that differs is the dark skin and the bright skin so on the sunshine glaze we are playing in you know in the daylight and uh, we are with the cursed swamp playing when the sun has gone down when it's dark outside instead so i felt like it's better to do something than nothing so i hope you will appreciate the playthrough that is still being provided scan the qr code here on the screen or go directly to patreon.com slash gold clash tommy via the link in the description down below to sign up for our ultimate tournament text guides for expert and or a master division we have tour play guides as well which is important to check out now for the upcoming tour rotation if you do enjoy the free content that we do here in the video and also on the channel thumbs up subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications last but not least all the information for the shots that i'm taking are in the info box make sure to follow along there and as always if you have any questions let me know in the comment section below let's go to hole number one Hole number two, here we are going to go for a rough bump, so hole number two of the Sunshine Glades to be more exact. Two top spin and a little bit of right spin, now the spins will vary depending on what type of wind direction you have, and that's like if you have a left to right type of wind instead, we'd be better off not playing with the right spin for an example. But here we're trying to catch a little funnel that is uh, from uh, by bouncing into the rough. Red ring by the rough line, we are adjusting max plus 10. And then it's time to center the ball and hit perfect. And you will notice here that due to the headwind, we will land a little bit further back than where we are aiming because the headwind will compress the ball's flight and therefore we will roll nicely towards the pin. Have in mind though, once again, that depending on what wind direction do you have off T, this type of setup will maybe vary slightly for hole at number seven of the sunshine glades now all right we have to be you know i'm thinking i am quite smart here when i'm doing this type of play so we're gonna set ourselves at p2 min line with our quarterback and katana four backspin and three left spin now we're looking to just position ourselves. The position is key here for the second shot that we're going to play. Is that we do obviously don't want to roll into rough. That's a no-brainer. But we do want to sit there at the fairway as well. So what we do do is that we, um, we do make the adjustment. Max plus 10. Uh, we center the ball and now we're just going to ping it down there. Now, I want to be perfectly transparent with that this is a conservative way of playing. We don't put any type of water in play at all. And we give ourselves a good, sh a good look at the eagle from distance because we're going to play into a funnel. What you need to have in mind though is like if you do have a tailwind or you do have the possibility to play with high level clubs and a good ball, then you can try to blast that ball actually directly to green. Uh, in a direct tail where you can, that's actually a quite easy shot, in my opinion, with very little risk. But as soon as you have some crosswind elements into it, that's going to be a bit aggressive. And you're going to have to flirt with the big bunker there and also the water. And obviously, that's not something we want to do. So for me, my mindset is like, OK, if I'm having a headwind or a crosswind, I'm going to lay up. If I do have a tail, I'm going to send it. Now, we are going for a rough bump here. Um, like rough bump or a bounce down so we can either then position ourselves doing uh here from a min line and then bounce up towards the pin for those of you that do fancy the rough bump then you can do so also you can see here that when we're wiggling around there is a nice little sticky spot there that we're trying to catch and that's a sticky spot that you can try to catch from the rough bump as well so if I would be choosing for one route to go with in a tournament, I would go for the rough bump. But it kind of requires uh, the perf like a good ball. It requires a good wind angle as well. 
because if we're not having that then obviously the bounce down is going to be the way i'm playing now we weren't really close on that one i guess that's why i did cut off the video in pure frustration but at least now you understand you know how i'm looking at it and what type of place you can play birdie in the end is definitely gonna be an, uh, not any type of issues to get Hole number eight is going to be a par five that we've been playing many, many times. And it's almost always the same type of play or the same type of two play nowadays with all the top spin boosts. But let's take a look at the more normal way of playing this hole, because this is going to be the way of playing um, if having any type of win besides a straight tailwind. Quarterback is what I'm starting with. If I would be having headwind, I would be playing with the rock instead, just to give myself a couple of more yards of power, max plus 10, and I'm using a side spin three ball, either a katana or a kingmaker to make sure that I don't have to go with a lot of curl, which could complicate things if we are unlucky. Bounces on the fairway over to the next fairway, and from here, we're gonna play a sniper towards the pin. So you could hear me say that we're gonna play this type of way in any type of win besides a straight tailwind. And that's because with a straight tailwind, we can push harder on our drive to use a club with a lot of topspin to bounce on that fairway that we are ending up on now, and then try to get the ball to green. And obviously the different topspin boost balls and stuff like that will come very handy here if you do have any of those to spare. Second shot, once again, it's going to be the sniper. It's going to be somewhere between medium and maximum distance of our club, or let's say somewhere between minimum and maximum distance of our club. So check where maximum club are, check where minimum club are, and then make a, then make a call to what you believe the club distance is going to be. The spins here will vary depending on what wind direction we're having. I like to use a little bit of left spin here, try to avoid being as close to the rough line on the left. The ball guideline short always if there is tailwind, but maybe not this short that I'm having here on the video because I'm truly going a little bit heavy on that offset. 10% elevation, true distance number, and even though this is a possible drop, I would say having to play with a sniper from distance is not going to be a drop that you're going to drop all the time, because there is bumps on that fairway, there is a lot of things that can happen when it comes to playing a wood club from far distance. However though, hole number 8 shouldn't be a problem to get the eagle, and the albatross is there to be claimed. Hole number one, we are going for pin. And here, if you do not have enough backspin on your club, we'd recommend to play with the driver that gives you the backspin. So there, that's the reason why you see me playing with a Thor Summer Level 6, where up in the info box I'm suggesting the Apocalypse. Because the Apocalypse has more power than Thor Summer. So if you do have a higher level Apocalypse, that's the club to be preferred because that will help you being able to aim higher up. Now you can see me dabbling around with a Kingmaker here also, and the Kingmaker, I would say, may not be the best ball here. Now, in today's climate, where we do have a lot of Power 4 and a Power 5 ball, I would definitely recommend to use one of those balls instead to allow yourself to start higher up and to use less overpower. Now, the ball comes in onto the green, and you can see we're ending up being on the right-hand side of the pin, but there will definitely be players dialing in this one for an hole in one. Fun hole in the mix of all the difficult ones, not maybe of the Sunshine Glades itself, but in general, this is uh, a very fun part four to play because, yes, it is a part four, it's not a part three. Adjustment max plus 20 is what I'm using. Take your game to the next level with our ultimate tournament text guide for expert and master division for the Coven Trials tournament here in Gold Clash the game. We are providing as always world class text guides for you to enjoy the tournament even more in this game. We're giving you detailed adjustments on how to attack the pin, but most importantly it's um easy way for you to qualify from the qualifying round to the opening round then from the opening round to the weekend round you can choose to play free to play ball or paid balls or a mix of it we do have something for each and every one so regardless what type of play player you are if you like to enjoy the tournaments a little bit more and at the same time learn to become a better tournament player join 
the largest Skype community on the market with us in Team Tommy. Scan the QR code on the screen or use the link in the description down below called patreon.com slash gold clash Tommy and you sign up today. For hole number nine and option number one, we are going to play with the rock to lay up on the right hand side. The reason this is going to be option number one is because we're going to have one play in crosswind and headwinds and one play in tailwinds. So max plus 10, we're using four bars of top spin and all the side spin to the left possible. And I'm using the rock here. So even if I'm using overpower with the rock, it has such a massive and good accuracy uh, that um, that even with some great balls here, we will still be safe. The goal here is to get the ball to be close to the rough, but not close enough so we're dangering rolling into it. Second shot, we play with our sniper, and here we can do two ways. One, we can go for a rough bump if we do have the distance enough. Or two, we're going to bounce on the fairway before the rough. And I would say this is the more likely way of playing it if we do have a headwind in crosswinds or maybe a slight tailwind on the second shot the rough bump i would say is definitely going to be a very uh, very valid play to play so 10 percent elevation true club distance a spin uh, to be just through the hole in headwind in crosswind spin to pin so we're not going in and in coming into hot and then we do have a perfect ball here in the end and we are obviously crossing our fingers to get this one drop for an albatross when the camera turns around we know it's going to be close will it drop yes it does this time and that's a nice one to have in our back pocket if we do have a crappy wind here so option number one we do have a sniper or like a rock and a sniper play and then we're going to take a look at a little bit more aggressive play with a very good chance to succeed for an albatross if the wind is correct from t Hole number five, here you can see me play with a special ball, meaning a win five ball. I'm setting up a power two min line uh, red ring by the bunker. And after that, I'm swapping to a uh, power one side spin three win five ball. This two give myself obviously the side spin three. Uh, but mainly here by playing from uh, with QB will allow myself to be a bit more consistent when attacking the pin because the first bounce will not be that high because if you are comparing your first bounce with a wood club compared to a driver like this you're gonna notice that with the driver the first bounce is a bit flatter than with a wood club and therefore it's gonna be a little bit easier to control now this is a par 3 that is generally very difficult and i think players that do have played this hole before is not really i mean might be some that are enjoying it but like in general it's not really uh, a super duper fun par 3 because you're often going to have to use a lot of side spin you're going to have to use some curls sometimes depending on what type of ball you want to play with but again is this possible to be played with a free to play ball such as a kingmaker absolutely but then you're going to have to back up and play with a wood club instead but this is an alternative suggestion for those that have the possibility to uh, play with a special ball with as i said a vocal explanation of how you play with a wood club Hole number four of the Sunshine Glades is a fun hole in my opinion. Another, another short part four where if you do have Tailwind or you have the balls playing with a lot of topspin, you can get yourself directly to the green. What I mean with balls having a lot of topspin is that you can do a double bounce, bouncing on the pad we're aiming at now to bounce onto the small pad that is inside the water and then try to get to green. The water is definitely in play, have that in mind. In a direct tailwind, we can actually go directly to the small pad, and that's actually less um, less dangerous in my opinion. But here we do have a layup, because we're not using a special ball in this playthrough. So what we are doing is we play ourselves as far down the fairway possible, play max plus 10 on the drive. Spins will vary, but we obviously want to avoid getting to the rough. The only problematic thing here from the left hand side is the green. The, this green is weird. It's really bumpy and it's something that you're going to have to have in mind. You can either play a dunk like I'm doing here now to avoid all the bumpiness and such. If you're playing the dunk, you're playing this no elevation, so zero. 
and then uh, I mean rings from Mim generally, but it's going to be close to Mim. When it comes to the Endbringer play, you play an EB school plus a 20. But again, this is a very bumpy green that we have. So if you feel that you can handle playing a dunk, honestly, from this range, it's going to be the better option of them two, in my opinion. Hole number eight of the Sunshine Glades, we are going to bounce on the fairway or like the fairway pad over the water and attack the pin for a drop. Now I'm starting by aiming at the hole. And once I've done that, then I'm applying some backspin. Why do I do that type of extra step by aiming before spin and then adding spins? It's because I do want to have a clear reference with my ball guideline combined with the ring reference by the rough line. It's always good to have two, at least two references on a part three, because having just one reference uh, that is clear enough, that's going to bring a lot of inconsistency. Mid plus 10 is what I'm adjusting. Ball comes down onto the green. You know, coming in a tad hot though, I must admit, but it's dropping nicely for an hole in one. Have in mind that the spins will vary in a headwind, and also in a crosswind here, we had a little bit of tailwind. So let's say in a headwind, we will most likely do a little bit less backspin than what I have in the video. And that's the same with the crosswind, really, where a little bit less backspin would be sufficient there too. Hole 8 offers a good chance for an hole in one. Hole number nine, here we really want to have some tailwind. Why is that? It's because we do want to reach over the water rough and sand on the left hand side having to play on the right hand side is going to make this albatross chance yeah much less i mean it's not it's still going to be a chance but it's going to be much much less likely to drop so what we're doing is that we use the club with the most power we use as much top spin that we can and in this instance i'm keeping myself with a titan ball just to show that it's makeable so i do make the adjustment max plus 10 then I'm pushing up to max and using whatever I believe then is the needed overpower. Sure, you can go max overpower. You can see how much room we have on that fairway. But I obviously want to use as little overpower as possible to make sure that I can hit perfect as well with that needle. Those of you that have the possibility to play with a power 4 or a power 5 ball should do that. This because you will then be able to start higher up. And that could, if the wind angle is... is um, if the wind angle is good for you on the drive with some tailwind is my point, then you can stay away from actually needed needing any sort of overpower at all. Second shot, you can either bounce on the fairway or you can do a rough bump. It's all down to personal preference. The bounce up, the only thing to think about there is that you have to have a little bit more, what can I say? You have to have some distance control because it's otherwise very easy to go in between clubs. Um, when it comes to uh, the sniper uh, rough bump here that we're doing, you have a bit more room and can kind of smash the ball down there in a bigger extent. Comes onto the green and we're dropping nicely for an albatross. Thank you so much everybody for watching this playthrough for Pro and Expert Division. Here you have seen me playing all the holes in the tournament and with various wins. Give me my best advice on how to crush the tournament. If you're looking for more content, you can find more free content here on YouTube, but also on our website goldclashtommy.com. But for those of you that are looking to take that little extra step, look for our premium guides. You can find that on patreon.com slash goldclashtommy. You have the link in the description down below, or you scan the QR code here on the screen to go directly there. We do have packages that range it all from $4 up to, you know, whatever level you want to, and we do have premium guides for all the game modes. So, do yourself a favor, sign up, Try for yourself and see how we can help you improve and have more fun with this game. You don't have to be a top tier player to sign up because we do have packages for all the, all the players that are playing this game. So check it out and see for yourself. Thank you very much once again for watching this playthrough. I wish you the best of luck in your Gold Clash game.